Welcome to the BFF Report. My name is Mike B. A. K. Phony. This is obviously a uh, technical alpha for what we we're gonna do later on. The background may or may not change, but definitely we'll have some fancy graphics or something we're gonna be adding here to make this thing look nice and shiny. Uh, the graphic, old graphics had all the Zam branding on it. They were just old graphics. We're gonna get rid of those and we'll start all over. Uh, but your guys' feedback is very important over the next several weeks as we go through and we add and we change things and we, we, we make the show look better. So we'll talk a little more about this after the show uh, or after the, the meaty part of it, which is gonna be talking about for Showdown. Uh, but I do want to say that this would not at all be happening if it wasn't for Patreon. The Patreon, the, all of you guys who are patrons and pledge on there, uh, make this happen. Like, totally make this happen. There was no way I was going to be able to spend as much time as it takes to do one episode of these things uh, if it wasn't for the fact that you guys are backing me up financially. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. So, Forced Showdown. Uh, this is a game that I feel like maybe deserves a little more traction. It's got its issues, of course, but for the most part, it's a pretty solid game. It plays a whole lot like... Diablo does, or any other ARPG that you guys have played on the PC, and funny enough, it also plays a lot like Diablo does on, like, the Xbox. <laughs> it's It's got a solid control scheme all the way around, uh, so the, when, you, when you get in, the gameplay is pretty much solid, uh, and then everything else that, that they've wrapped around it content-wise just, uh, it's just so incredibly robust. So this is probably one of the most detailed BFF reports I think I've ever done, uh, and also my first time back at doing this in a very long time, so... I hope you guys enjoy the show, and I'll see you guys after to talk a little bit more about some of the behind the scenes stuff. So first thing you're gonna do is jump into character selection and choose your contender. You have four different characters to choose from, broken down into two different classes. The first one we're gonna take a look at is the Squire of Light, which I should know is kind of considered to be the freshy friendly character. I mean, ranged overall is kind of OP. This is the easiest to use of the two ranges, which would pretty much make it the lowest barrier for entry character. So this guy has a focused beam of light that gets stronger over time until the final blast. Very simple to aim, especially on a controller. You can just basically wave this thing around until you hit something and then keep it there. Then he has a burst of light that doubles as a knockback. Very, very handy. Then he has temporary invincibility that lasts about two seconds, augmented with cards. No reason to really point out value there, it's pretty obvious. Next range character is Stormbringer, the elven bowyer, I don't know what he is, from the future or something? His main attack is essentially an arrow. You charge it back, the longer you charge it, the more damage it does. Easy. Then he has a chain lightning arrow that provides a bit of ranged AoE, always handy, and an upgradable bubble that knocks enemies back. You can augment this thing to have different properties when you're standing inside of it as well. Good to note. And his passive ability is one of my favorites. It's just an untargetable, angry little storm cloud that flies around fucking with enemies the entire match. Then we move on to the melee classes, starting with Ravager, who uses a combo point style system where basic attacks are used to build what's called friendly, I'm sorry, frenzy, <laughs> definitely not friendly, we'll just leave that in there. And then he can spend those points to augment other abilities he has. For example, his second ability, which is essentially a dunk, and he could throw himself at an enemy, and the more frenzy you have built up, the more damage it does. Strafe is a basic dash with a damage component and also consumes frenzy, but it's used to reduce the cooldown of the skill instead. And his fourth ability does two things. It increases his attack speed by a significant amount, and it removes the movement penalty, allowing you to violently hug pesky, highly mobile targets. And then finally, there's Volko, a straight up tier 12 warrior with Hand of Rag. <laughs> I mean, it is. It's all his. His main ability is a chargeable basic melee swing that will do cleave damage to multiple targets. Then he has a knockback that will throw around enemies in a straight line. And then there's Flame fucking NATO, or Blade Storm. Does an obvious bit of damage with anyone in his path, but it also works as an oh shit button as it lets you move through enemies. Utility. And his final ability is a shield that absorbs the next hit and triggers an AoE knockback. Combine that with Volcanic Strike and Flamingo NATO, and you have a very avoidance focused melee class. Now, once you pick your character, you have to pick your companion, and these are super important. This is your hunter's pet. Like, these guys are critical. Sometimes you're gonna get in a match and they're gonna die, like, instantly because the AI is gonna let them stand in the flames or something. It happens, but other times they're gonna save your ass. You have three of them. You have a ranged, which is a squishy little luck dragon. Then you have your melee, which is a mini ravager that pretty much gives no fucks and charges right into battle every time, sometimes killing himself. And the third one is like a dinosaur or something. I haven't unlocked it yet, but I'll let that one be a surprise for you guys. And I guess for me too. But I'm pretty sure it's a T-Rex. Now, how would I unlock that third companion? Well, they have quests. And quests are pretty straightforward in terms of requirements and rewards. And you'll naturally complete most of them through basic gameplay. If we're gonna focus on anything, obviously go for anything that unlocks a companion or anything that uh, boosts your companion's overall usefulness or pretty much anything that gives you gold because you can turn around and spend that on getting new cards. 
All right, so what about these cards? It's pretty much the the other huge, huge factor of gameplay here for Force Showdown. So let's talk about them for a minute. They're divvied up into three different types. You have consumables, spells, and upgrades. Consumables will grant you an active ability that you can trigger during a battle and sometimes replenish at the end. A couple examples are the dual bot that summons two drone turrets, uh, or a fairy bottle, which can grant you health by life stealing it from the enemies around you. Then there are your spells, which are more battle structure and health related, with most of the cards focusing on drawing cards, or adding mana, or just simply healing the player. And then finally, upgrades. Upgrades have a more direct impact on the action portion of each battle, with stat modifiers such as crit boosters, or health increases, uh, or just straight damage buffs. And in the mix, there are class-specific cards. So think like Hearthstone, have hero-specific cards. Same basic concept. They could make an otherwise mediocre ability fairly amazing, with my absolute favorite, being that I'm a Squire of Light kind of refreshy here, uh, is taking the Overcharge and applying Over Overcharge, making his knockback pulse twice, and if I'm lucky enough to draw two of those cards, three times in a single match. Just invaluable. And there's lots of cards that do basically this kind of uh, augmentation, but to other abilities for other characters. So how do you get more of these cards? Well, they have this thing called Fortune. You spend gold, you spin the wheel, and you get a card from it. If you have a duplicate card, then it's going to turn into a shard, and you can take those shards and you could make a card that you actually don't have. It's a pretty interesting uh, system because a lot of times when you spin this fucking thing, it doesn't, it, it does, it does, it does the same thing that that wheel on Price is Right does. Do, 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 and you fuck, that's it. You missed the dollar and you're like, you're bankrupt, right? It does the same thing almost every spin, but it's an easy way to get more cards and it costs nothing. It, there's no microtransactions, which kind of is a bummer. Kind of is honestly kind of a bummer. I know we're paying for the game. It should be free or whatever, but, but what if I'm extra lazy and I want to spend extra $10 to get a ton of shards and just craft a bunch of cards I don't already have? They could have made a bunch of money off this. I'm just saying they could have, but whatever, they didn't, which means they balanced it for the, uh, the buy the box and then play for free player, which I'm also okay with. I guess. So let's set the stage, because this is a game show after all, and in a game show you have programs, which are sets of battles that are headlined by a particular boss, and then the mechanics uh, change between programs. So, for example, in, in Frontline, they have more enemy spawners, which essentially, over time, will generate a ton of mobs that you don't necessarily have to kill at the end of the arena. They're just there to harass you. Uh, and also, the program lasts longer. You have way more matches you have to go through, or battles you have to go through, in order to reach the final boss and thus complete that particular program. And that's not all. The boss, which in pretty much all of them can cast random spells like little laser beams or dropping little bombs here and there, whatever. But in Frontline, they can actually play cards of their own, summoning random bosses, making random mobs like 200% stronger or whatever, or just doing whatever they can, whatever they can, to just add even more RNG to every single thing that you do during these programs. But let's not pretend that the Crucible is easy. I mean, initially, yeah, it's kind of, it's pretty, it's, okay, it's easy. But then they added the emblem system. <laughs> and this thing, it, it's funny because Frontline takes a really long time to complete. And I have not completed it yet because that's a lot of RNG to deal with. And you, have, you need a very, very strong deck to make it through Frontline. And probably not using Squire of Light, I'll be honest. But the Crucible, with the emblem support, makes things just so, so ridiculously difficult with a flat buff or something to, to whatever. So for example, you have uh, plus X percent, 30% to uh, boss damage and 50% health. Uh, you can make all the enemies twice as strong so you're not cleaving through things and you're getting swarmed all the time. There's just so many things that you could do to make the uh, to, to make that program that much more difficult. And it's, it's something that is a brilliant feature they just added, added recently so for those of you guys who already played this game, you can probably go back and play that and get just tons of replay value out of it. I have, and I've not even completed this damn thing. But the benefit is that you get more gold out of it. The more gold per run, obviously, the more the more gold you can spend on fortune to get more cards and all that, and then you come back with a stronger deck, and then you just repeat the cycle until you complete all the programs. Now, another type of program is the seasonal, the leaderboard-driven side of things over here, where you can get fame and fortune by placing well based on each of the dailies uh, rule sets, uh, from freeform to pre-made to one-shot only. Uh, these are obviously good for just standard daily content. There's a lot of repeatable content they've included here, which makes it pretty much impossible to say that, you know, there's there's not enough content, right? Because I haven't even told you about the rule set for every battle. Oh my gosh. 
Now, these are where the rules are laid out right here, and they changed. Every every arena is different, and sometimes you can have one or two. Sometimes they cancel each other out because of the way that uh, the way that the rules are applied. Uh, some will add extra enemies because maybe they give you a buff. Uh, some will uh, decrease the number of enemies because it's considered like, for example, I think one of them is uh, it, it makes enemies uh, run faster or something. And so the result is fewer enemies. Yay! They run faster. So what? I'm gonna kill them anyway. That's the whole point. Make them come to me faster. It's great. Uh, so it, there's there's always a toss of a balance here. Now you have four to choose from, and you only have to complete two to unlock the boss battle for that particular sector, for that particular stage. But sometimes, sometimes it can work against you. Sometimes you go into a fight, especially when you go to that boss battle, that you cannot choose which, well, you can't choose what rule set you want to go with because there's no toss-up. It's basically, that's what you get, and just deal with it. Sometimes you get stuck with the shittiest deal. Uh, and here's a real example of something that happened. Uh, I had an emblem loaded that caused damage whenever I was dealt a duplicate card, and it had a modifier that gave me a rule set for a particular battle that gave me like two consumables or something every round. Now, there are only so many consumables, and I already had a bunch of them in my normal deck. So, I ended up clenching my way through each arena, begging for health globes, and just having to play extra cautious as every arena ended in a guaranteed 30 to 60 health loss. Now, I did end up winning that particular battle, thankfully, and my Fitbit reported that I also burned my entire week's of the calories, so I'm also thankful for that. But you can see how these rules end up playing against you, uh, even if you have, like, the strongest deck, and you'd have to just change your playstyle up. Now, each of these battles are broken up into eight procedurally generated arenas, which shouldn't be a surprise given how much random shit they throw in us anyways. Why not just, why not make each arena be randomly generated? It makes sense. And the last arena is the boss. The only time this changes, though, is when there's a modifier that cuts the number of arenas by half. So you get to the boss by, like, the fourth slot or so. And the arenas themselves are pretty straightforward. You drop in, kill everything, pick up any health orbs, and these little blue point glo globs uh, that you spend on boons after a battle, which are also randomly picked. And that's it. And each arena you complete progresses the mana count, similar to how mana increases every round in Hearthstone and other CCGs, allowing you to obviously play more, uh, more and more powerful cards as you get closer to the boss. And the game is designed to be just just difficult enough that deck construction actually contributes a great deal to your success. I mean, you're not gonna just go balls deep on an entire program without playing a single card. It's just not gonna happen. And the arenas themselves can also fight back with several of them employing traps and triggered AOE mechanics just to make everything that much more a pain in the balls. And then there's the bosses. And I'll be honest, many of them are kind of a joke, unless you're playing uh, this emblem, in which case they're all huge dicks and I'm the asshole. But seriously, once you learn the mechanics, you just need to get good and manage them accordingly. In the Crucible, without emblems, this is pretty cake as you typically end up just DPSing them down. But in Frontline and possibly beyond, this can be a bit more difficult as the swarms of summoned mobs can make things a bit, uh, yet a bit tricky because you have to balance them and then of course you manage where the boss is going. But as long as you don't just stand in the green stuff, as it were, then you're pretty much good to go with bosses. And I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the soundtrack. The soundtrack in this is awesome. It really is. It's a perfect fit for the game. The there's actually a uh, there's a simple theme that they they play on for the intro here when you're ever in the staging area. And depending on where you're at throughout this whole staging area, it's the same basic theme, the same core theme and progression. Uh, it's just different, slightly different two notes, different uh, instruments, different uh, you hear a choir come in or something. Uh, and it's just it has this really heroic feel. Just it's basically just uh, heroically catchy enough without being repetitively annoying. And it and all the other songs they're playing during the actual matches themselves are a perfect fit for the game. Now overall, Forced Showdown seems to be the best game of the bunch of Forced games that they have. Uh, the, the biggest downside, I think, is probably that there's no co-op. It would be kind of nice to go through, with, through go, go through this whole mess of things with co-op and just maybe add more enemies, the same way that they add more enemies with their uh, with their rule set system. Uh, add add more enemies and allow me to go through there with with a buddy and you know, hey, maybe turn on friendly fire, make a little more magic. Out. No, don't do that. Uh, but it's 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 that's probably the biggest complaint I have about the game. Again, I still think that selling shards uh, for a reasonable price, maybe like you know a dollar for fifty or something like that. Well, no, that's terrible. A uh, dollar for 500 uh, would be great, but it's but you know that's that's their call if they want to do that. They do have skins. I think it'd be great if they have more skins they could add. Uh, I would love to throw more money at these guys because I feel like the more content they add to Force Showdown, the better it's going to get. It's already an amazing game. It could only get better from here. 
Now, if you're interested in more Force Showdown, you can go and check it out down in the link below. I highly recommend it, of course. You can tell I love the game, I love the soundtrack, everything about it's great except for the multiplayer thing. Uh, but now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about some of the behind the scenes stuff. First, first, I mentioned Patreon was definitely hooking it up. I got some special people here, here that I need to go ahead and actually acknowledge uh, because these are some of the, 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 uh, the higher tier donors, right? Uh, we have uh, KDG, Swirly Nards, Inferno256, you guys probably seen him around, Zachasaurus, of course, Peter J.M., Williams, Nobody War, Bad Life, Shrimp Paycheck, all very familiar names to some of you guys, uh, Elusive Elephant, Varlin, Mr. Smith, Mythic Griffin, Kittens, Trom, Kenzorb, uh, Alex S., I like saying Kenzorb because it's Kenzie, right? Uh, Alex S., Joey A., Skyform, Taylor W., Liam Wash, Strachnor, and of course, Ninja. These are the people who are helping contribute some of the large dollar amounts. You can see another list of people down below who are contributing still a significant amount at like $15 each, then 10, then five, and even a dollar. Uh, it's, it's just like, it's, it's amazing how, how successful that they've, uh, they've helped me become in this right, you know, in terms of like directly contributing. And of course, all you guys who are helping share the video and, every, and helping it, uh, helping move it along and help grow the channel and everything. Uh, it's funny, just between you and me, uh, before, when I was still at Zam and I hadn't come back yet, like to start doing this a full time, I was like hemorrhaging users. And now we're at a space where we're kind of, uh, we're, we're kind of starting to level out a little bit and starting to build it back up. So uh, eventually we'll break even and then we're gonna start building it back up. And it's because of everybody here that's watching uh, that's even possible. So uh, graphics wise and everything, we're gonna be doing a lot of work on that. I keep saying we because I know that you guys are part of this whole thing, right? Uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of uh, changes to the graphics. I have a couple of ideas. Some of them I showed up on stream. Uh, I'm gonna be playing around with them and seeing what works and what doesn't work. Uh, there are some things that are gonna be maybe too erratic for like the setting. And so like, what do I do? Do I change the setting or do I change the graphics itself? You know, I want something that is a bit more modern, something that doesn't necessarily have to be, like I don't wanna do the green screen thing again because green screens are huge and massive. They take up so much space. Uh, but I mean, if it comes down to it, maybe I will, but we'll see. Uh, I do think that there is a, um, we're gonna we're, we're gonna we're gonna find the right graphics. We're gonna find the right song. Uh, I, I'm thinking I'm gonna try to keep the original song, or maybe just do like a remix of it uh, to kind of bring it up to date. I mean, it's still pretty awesome, honestly. Uh, and and just just work on some of the technical aspects and to make basically flesh this show out. Uh, next episode, I'll probably have some kind of graphics or something to make it kind of again make it feel a bit more like a solid show. But I didn't want to hold back on Force Showdown and punish them by not putting anything out for uh, for a great deal of time, right? Like you're basically holding it. I've already held on to it for like an additional week as I was working on it. I didn't want to hold on to it again. So yeah, we're gonna take a look at, I think, uh, Doom and uh, probably Overwatch. Uh, Overwatch is gonna be really interesting. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, then Doom, of course, I'm a huge Doom fan. So I'm looking forward to being extremely elated and excited or being very, very severely let down. Uh, we'll see what happens. Obviously, I will let you guys know. That's what this show is all about, man. Going in depth on somebody's game is great. So yeah, I'm really excited. About, can you tell? I'm like really excited about this, right? Okay, good. So, uh, so that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, supporting me over the past like seven years, eight years, however long it's been. Uh, and uh, stay tuned for more of a little bit of everything. Great, great. Thanks, Mike BK Phony, BFF Report. That's supposed to be BFF. That was terrible. I'm gonna redo the whole thing now. Thanks. All right, see ya.